Hey guys, it's Chris from Steeda, and today we're going to talk about reducing rear subframe deflection, stopping wheel hop, and getting all that power to the ground on your S550. We're going to go over a ton of different IRS components from Steeda, get them installed on this car. So without further ado, let's get started. Today we're going to stop wheel hop with all the parts on this table. Starting with the IRS subframe braces, we also have the alignment kit, we have our adjustable toe links, IRS subframe bushing supports, the vertical links with polyurethane bushings, I'll go over that a little bit further, and all the hardware for the other side of the IRS subframe braces. It's a lot to go over. Top of the list, let's talk about these IRS subframe braces. We've had these out since the S550 dropped in 2015, and they really help limit that subframe movement that causes wheel hop. The IRS subframe braces bolt right into place. They work with jacking rails and really help eliminate that deflection in the rear subframe that's a direct cause of wheel hop. Speaking of deflection, the IRS subframe bushing supports. Now, what you're seeing right here is a specific part number for GT350s because four, or I should say six out of the eight work with GT350s. The reason for this being is Ford changed up the bushings in the rear subframe for Performance Package 2 and GT350 models. So what you're seeing right here is specifically for GT350, 350R, and Performance Package 2. We also have another part number for those GT and EcoBoost guys as well. The purpose of these bushing supports is exactly that, to support the bushings. They slide right into place on either side of the four mounting points on the rear subframe and they help eliminate the deflection in that rear subframe bushing up against the body of the car. Deflection is kind of the theme here. With that said, we'll move on to the vertical links. If you haven't seen the factory vertical links on these cars, they're stamped steel, they're pretty small. If you're looking to up the ante, the way to do that is these billet aluminum vertical links. We offer them with two different bushings, Delrin or polyurethane. If you're more of a drag racer, you wanna opt for the Delrin, which is included in our ultimate stop to hop kit and will offer the most reduction when it comes to deflection in the rear subframe. However, I went with the polyurethane bushings because that's more catered towards handling road course, autocross, and carving up those back roads. Next up, we have the adjustable toe links, and they do just that, allow you to easily adjust the toe in the rear wheels of your car. Now, this actually locks out the factory adjustment point for your rear toe. These allow you to dial in on one adjustment point for your rear toe and hold that alignment longer, especially if it's a performance alignment and you plan on beating the car up on track. Moving on to the simplest part here, the IRS subframe alignment kit. These dowels slide into the factory mounting holes for the rear subframe, all four, and help keep that subframe lined up straight and square with the car. If you're looking for a complete IRS stop the hop solution, everything you see on this table is the way to go. If you're looking for an order of operations, personally, I would say the bushing supports first, then the IRS braces. The IRS alignment kit's more on the cost effective side, so it's obviously a no brainer. Then you have the vertical links, and then last but not least, the adjustable toe links. All of this together will help eliminate that wheel hop altogether on the rear end of your S550. In terms of installation, it's all in the rear IRS of your car. Ford has done a great job of building these things in a way that they're easy to take apart and put back together. So we'll show you how. All right, so we're gonna dive into the installation here. Uh, there is a little bit of an order of operations when it comes to working on the IRS of these cars, especially when you're throwing all these parts at them. So the first things first, you're going to do the IRS subframe bushing supports. While you're in there, you slide those alignment kit, the alignment kit or the alignment dowels, however you wanna say it. Um, and then after that, we'll do the billet vertical link and then the toe link. Lastly, when you have both sides completed, that's when you'll put on the IRS subframe braces. So first things first, we'll get started on those bushing supports and the alignment kit and uh, go on from there. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and loosen up this subframe bolt and these two bolts holding on the bracket to the subframe. We're gonna do the same thing for the rear. Don't need to drop them all the way out, just get things loosened and we'll go from there. 13 millimeter gets these two bolts right here. Then you're gonna go ahead and switch over to a 21 millimeter. And keep in mind, 
You're only doing one side at a time here, so you really don't need anything to support the subframe quite yet. Um, if you do one side at a time, you don't need to worry about anything crazy like the subframe falling out or anything like that if the other side's bolted in. All right, so once you have both of them loosened equally, you can go ahead and pull them all the way out. All right, first thing you want to do, grab your subframe bushing inserts. The, you have two, you have a, oops. You have two, you have a skinnier one and a thicker one that are identically cut. The thicker one goes in the front and the skinnier one goes in the rear. Up front on the top, fits right in that bushing. This one right here goes in the bottom. You can just kind of push it up into place. Now, as I explained in the product review portion of this video, we're gonna have to omit the bottom bushing here because on GT350s, 350Rs, and Performance Package 2 cars, this bushing is different. And this is actually one of the bushings that Ford has switched out over the past few years, just di even dialing in now the S550 rear suspension in comparison to when it came out in 2015. While you're back here, you have your alignment dowels. There's a thicker one and a skinnier one. The skinnier one goes in the rear, and they might fall out, so you may want to grab your bolt to kind of hold them in the place. <clears throat> and the thicker one goes up front. You may need to move the bracket out of the way to get access. That's fine, we can just pull one of these bolts out, slides to the side. You have your alignment kit and the dowel here. Slides into place, perfect fit. Now, you're gonna wanna get these started by hand before you go ahead and zap them back in. So the best way to do that is to get a pole jack and, uh, or a regular jack if you're doing this on a jack and jack stands and uh, get this subframe up and lined up correctly so these start to go in by hand. All right, so a good mounting point of the rear subframe is right here behind the toe link. Go ahead and start jacking it up into place. You can start wrenching this in by hand. You can torque them after we're done with everything else. It makes things a little easier if you tighten the bracket first because it holds the bushing support into place. And at that point, you can get your wrench and start tightening everything. Okay, so next up, we're gonna move to the vertical link. What we're gonna wanna do is take your pole jack and get it right under the knuckle here so you have something to do elevate this when you are pulling the vertical link apart and that way you have an adjustment point to get everything to line up when you're putting it back together. Just get it supported to start. Get some weight off of it. And then we have an 18 on the bottom and a 15 on top. Now keep in mind when you're pulling the top one apart, you actually have a nut on the back, it's a square nut. Um, it may go flying when you pull it off, so I wouldn't say put your fingers back there and like try to grab it, but just be cognizant of when you're pulling that bolt out, 
that nut may go flying, and you'll need it in order to reinstall the billet vertical links. Once you have those, just go ahead and put that together and set it aside because you'll reuse this going forward. Now you're ready to go ahead and pull the bottom off. That's an 18 millimeter. Go ahead and use a ratchet for that initial loose, for that initial loosen, and then after that, and use the impact to take it off. And at that point, it's loose. Pull this out. And you're ready to take your vertical link out. Another thing to keep in mind is that you don't have a nut on the back side of the bottom bolt. So now you're ready for your Steeda billet aluminum vertical link. These washers are included. What you're gonna to wanna to do is whether you have Delvin or Poly, doesn't matter. You're gonna to wanna to grease around the bushing here and kind of use it to hold that washer in place as you install the vertical link on the car. So hold that to the side. And to be honest, you really can never use too much grease for something like this. Kind of holds it in place. Do the same thing on the other side. Now you're ready to install it. All right, next, you want the big side of the vertical link aiming up, with this part aiming towards the back of the car. Same way the old one came out. Slide it up into place. Carefully slide your steed of vertical link in there. You may need to manipulate it just a little bit. get it in there. Sometimes you may have to push on the back of the brake to get it into place. There you go, that one started. The top one looks like that's gonna be a little fun. So we're gonna try a different mounting point back here on the back of the lower control arm, or the back of the knuckle rather. See what we can do about getting it lined up. Grab your factory hardware. Now it's pretty cool that this nut on the back side, it's got a flag on it, meaning that it'll spin and stop. So once you have it started, you'll just be able to zap it in and you're good to go. There you go, perfect. And all you really need to do is get it started. I believe there's, it's a nylock, so it's gonna stop. But the point is, it turns, it stops right there, thanks to that flag. So all you have to do is tighten it, and it'll tighten right down. So this bottom bolt sometimes can be a little difficult. You just grab a hammer and you, you gotta tap it in to start it, and now the thread's grabbed. It's just a matter of getting everything lined up. So you want to start tightening the bottom bolt. Torque spec for this is 129 foot-pounds. We'll just get things hand tight 
and then torque it down once we are tighten, done tightening the top. One of the great things about these vertical links is that they're pretty beefy. So they're gonna be stronger than the factory ones. The bushings are gonna allow for less deflection and the best part of it all, there's no noticeable increase in NVH. You should feel resistance on the nylock nut. Work it its way down the bolt. Top torque spec is 76 foot pounds. And again, we'll tighten that once we're done going hand tight here. All right, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab your torque wrench. We'll do 76 first since that's lower. Go ahead and tight, tighten the 76. That's it. And the bottom is 129. Ready to move on to the tow links. All right, first things first, you wanna take your pull jack, get it right under where the tow link meets the knuckle, just to kind of take a little bit of weight off of it. This is gonna give you an adjustment point to be able to take off the tow link and put your new Steeda tow link on. Now, there's two different ways to install the tow link. First one is you can reuse your factory cam washers, which requires making a notch on, on your subframe and the factory cam washer so you can kind of get it ballpark in the right spot before you take it to the alignment shop. Now, I'll be honest, the best way to do this is to use our lockouts. That retains all adjustability in the adjustable tow link itself. Now, in terms of installation, it actually makes things a little bit easier. The only thing is, if you use those lockout plates, it's gonna knock your alignment out way out of whack. So you'll wanna go straight to an alignment shop after installation. So first things first, you grab 18 millimeter on the back side to hold things into place. For the bottom one, we got some more space. We can use the impact. Yeah. Don't need to hold anything on the back side because it's welded to the tow link itself, the nut. The back one, ready to take that out. And grab the nut, grab your cam washer. Come on. No, you don't want to leave. There we go. So you have your Steeda tow link ready to install this thing. Make sure you take the lock nuts and believe it or not, loosen them a little bit so you have some room for adjustability in getting this thing into place. You want the part on the bottom side of this link to be aiming towards the bottom of the car. All right, so you want to grab your included Steeda hardware. You have this bolt you have a washer, you have the lockout plate, that's on one side. And on the other side, you have the other lockout plate, another washer, and the nut to hold it all together. You want the bolt to go in from the rear of the car, headed towards the front, with the nut towards the front of the car. So you start at the back, slides right in. Okay, so everything's hanging. What you're gonna to wanna to do, and this goes for both sides, front and back, this plate is offset, um, where the hole is aiming towards one side of the plate. You want this hole to be closer to the center of the car, closer to the differential. Slide it into place. It fits right in between these two notches. You got your washer. Now you're ready to tighten her down. Okay, so the key to tightening this thing, there's a lot of moving parts here and you wanna make sure the plates stay in the place. So grab a 7 8 inch wrench for the back side and kind of use the round end to hold everything in place with one hand and you go ahead and tighten 
with the other. Now torque spec for this is 129 foot-pounds. But it'll be a minute before we get there. And it's okay if the plate falls down a little bit. We'll straighten that up as we get closer. Again, you want that round end towards the center of the car. Now what you're gonna wanna do is let down this pull jack Pull it out of the way. Let's take this guy and turn your adjusters or your lock nuts and the adjustment in the middle to fit on the knuckle. Again, you're going to want to leave some adjustment in there because remember it's going straight to the alignment shop. You can grab your factory bolt. The nut goes in from the front. And remember, the factory link had a, the factory link had a nut welded on the other side of it. Ours does not, so we include a nut on the back side goes on the back side. So you grab your 18 for your front, and 7 eighths for the back. And this is also 129 foot pounds. Just get it snug first. Then you're ready to crank down on it. And that's it. And next up, we're gonna move on to IRS subframe braces. Last but not least, before we put the IRS subframe braces on, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab your 21 millimeter socket and tighten these down to 129 foot-pounds. These brackets are still a little loose on uh, both sides, so we'll tighten those up after we get the subframe um, up into the place. And then lastly, the brackets. Go ahead and grab your 13 millimeter socket. Tighten those brackets down. Now you're ready to install your IRS subframe braces. Next up is installing the IRS subframe support braces. So what we're gonna wanna do is grab a 15 millimeter socket and remove this back bolt first. You can go ahead and set this bolt aside as we will not be reusing it. Then you're ready to grab your IRS subframe brace and put it up into place. The trick here is to start the center bolt up on the subframe bracket first so you can swivel the brace into place. Should be able to start it by hand. Just get a couple threads in there. Then you grab the rest of your hardware. The thicker bolt and the washer goes along with this plate here. You slide the plate into place. Neat little pocket there on the back of the subframe. Go ahead and you can start 
putting that up in place just to get things started. After that, you have the thicker long bolt and the nut to go along with it, along with the washer. And that goes in the furthest back here. Goes all the way through. And you put the nut on the top hand side. Just get that started. by hand, and then we'll go ahead and tighten everything once we have it all started. Now something to keep in mind is that these subframe braces have actually been redesigned a couple times due to the tooling changes on Ford's assembly line. This is a great example where you may need to loosen things up just a little bit in order to get all the bolts started. Then the easy ones, the skinny long bolts, both of those have washers as well. These go in the front. Now keep in mind, the subframe brace may require a little bit of manipulation to get into place. So you may need to loosen one of these bolts or pull them out to kind of get it into place. That's because this thing is as exact as it's going to get when it comes to the tolerances like I was talking about from the factory. Get everything kind of snug. Swap out to a 17 for these guys. Swap out to a 17 when you're tightening down the back side. And you want an 18 millimeter wrench and a 17 millimeter socket for the nut on top of the subframe for the rearmost bolt. It may require a little creativity to get the wrench into place. There you go. Go ahead, leave that wrench up there so we can use it for the torque wrench. You grab your torque wrench. So the center bolt here is 41 foot-pounds. There it is. And these guys up here are 45 foot pounds. And finally, the back, switch over to a 17. You get the front. And these are 55 foot pounds. All right. And remember, you have a wrench up here holding your nut. So that's got to get a little creative there. This one's also 55 foot pounds. One more check. Perfect. Gently pull your wrench down. Go ahead and repeat the process on the other side, but outside of that, your installation is totally done. There's one thing we all know here, and it's that the GT350 is already awesome from the factory. Ford Performance did an awesome job in making this GT350 a heck of a step up over your standard GT. Now, if you're looking to take it to the next level, that's where all of these IRS components come in to stop that wheel hop. But it's not just wheel hop, it's getting that power from the engine through the drivetrain and down to the ground. 
Now, I took this car on Tail of the Dragon recently at Ponies in the Smokies, and there's absolutely no doubt that this car is vastly improved. It's absolutely point and shoot. And the power that you're able to put down coming out of the corners comes on smooth thanks to that flat plane crank and screams up top. The IRS subframe bushing support system really helping reduce that deflection that you get in the rear subframe up against the body. The alignment kit helping line up that rear subframe with the rest of the body nice and square. And on top of that, the vertical links and toe links. Toe links allowing you to adjust that toe nice and easy, getting everything dialed in for that track alignment and the vertical links, again with that deflection. I went with the polyurethane bushings because I planned on road racing and autocrossing this car. If you plan a little bit more towards the drag strip, you definitely want to go for the Delrin option as well. Whether you have a standard S550 EcoBoost, a GT, a 350, or even a 500, there's definitely places to improve in getting that power to the ground from that powerhouse under the hood. You can pick up all these parts for your IRS right here at Steeda.com. Go ahead and comment below. Let us know what you think about this installation, what other videos you want to see on the S550 or GT350, even the 500. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when that video drops right on your phone. And don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.